DFG Science TV, Bonded Concrete, Braking Tests, How Strong is Ultra Strong? The researchers from RWTH Aachen University want to find out more about the behaviour of construction elements made of ultra-high performance concrete. In particular, they're studying the deformation and cracking behaviour of the concrete and the steel. In the different test setups, they use several methods to measure different parameters. This enables the researchers to collect data for further analysis, for example of the lengths, the strains in the materials or forces. For each of these parameters, the right measuring instrument is required. Usually, a length can be measured using a folding meter stick, but although the diameter of a strand is a length, the stick is much too rough to measure it. This simple example shows how important it is to have the right tool. Now the researchers want to investigate the anchorage quality of the strands in the concrete. Initially, they're held under tension. When this tension is released, the strands move a few tenths of a millimeter into the concrete. This is known as strands end slip. This end slip can be measured experimentally, and that's what we're doing with this inductive displacement transducer. This displacement transducer measures even the slightest displacement. So it's attached to the strand and then measures the displacement of the strand relative to the surface of the concrete. So we have a fixed housing. And in this fixed housing, there's this sensor which can move in and out of the housing. The sensor passes through a coil causing an inductive current to flow in this induction field so that the displacement can be measured electrically. This allows us to measure the displacement of the strands relative to the concrete down to the hundredth of a millimeter range with very high accuracy. The strain is another important parameter as it provides information about the load level in the materials. To measure the strain, so-called strain gauges are attached to the concrete or steel in various locations. The researchers need to attach a lot of them so that the deformation can be monitored continuously. They begin by marking the position where the strain gauges will be attached. Then they sand and clean the surface. The strain gauges are aligned precisely using a template. Then the concrete around the strip is masked off to make the special glue stick where it's needed. A sheet of plastic is used to keep the adhesive layer as thin as possible. Once the excess glue has set and been removed, the sensor is firmly attached to the concrete and can be wired up to the measuring amplifier. That's the first step of the process completed. The strain gauges are on, but how do they actually work? The strain gauge is made of an electrically conductive material whose resistance changes measurably when it is extended. Since concrete is very stiff, the strain of the concrete when subjected to stress is very low. To demonstrate this and show how such a strain gauge works, represented here by this drawing, we've put this block of foam rubber under this wooden board. When it's subjected to a load, the block of foam rubber is deformed and the strain gauge is compressed by the same amount as the deformation in the vertical, thus allowing the deformation to be measured. As the load is increased, the deformation increases as well. This allows us to infer the load that this block was subjected to on the basis of the deformation. The principle is exactly the same in steel or in concrete, although the deformation is far less developed, hence it's measured electronically. If the deformation becomes too great, the concrete cracks. These cracks can only be measured very roughly with a crack scale, however, so the researchers use high-precision measuring techniques, in this case an optical one. A camera is set up at a specific distance from a sample. Inside the measuring field, the sample is marked with black dots. This allows the deformation to be recorded very precisely using the camera. The camera takes photos while the beam is deformed under load. This enables the researchers to detect movements of less than a thousandth of a millimetre. After that, the digital images are evaluated using special software. The red areas here show cracks which are just a few tenths of a millimetre wide. As well as the length and the strains, one of the other key parameters is the force exerted. This is measured using so-called load cells. The operating principle is similar to that of the strain gauges. If you exert pressure on the top here, then the output signal changes and that can be measured, recorded and saved on a PC. Load cells like this are very appropriate for measuring the force exerted on the loading point. 
For instance, here under the jack. But how will these measurements work in the tests? And what information will they provide? Visit DFG Science TV for more information. Awaken the researcher within you.